morning, everybody. I'm Holly Morris, and on this Tuesday, we are going to be channeling our inner Claude Monet, Pablo Picasso, maybe even Jackson Pollock, as we are live this morning at the art studio of Mary Ann Pollock. She is a renowned artist in the D.C. area, but she also shares her talent in a form of drop-in art classes. She teaches all different styles all different levels and what we're going to do this morning is get three little classes in ourselves if we can I think we've signed up for some geometric giraffe art that's what's currently going on I'm going to try to jump in on this class in just a few minutes we're going to learn a little still life and watercolor we're also going to do some blind contour line drawing I'm not even sure exactly what that is but you and I are going to learn it together we're going to learn all about art we're going to talk about Marianne's art as well and of course we're going to tell you how you can sign up for these creative classes yourself and if you are wondering, is Marianne related to the actual Jackson Pollock? We'll just have to stay tuned to find out. Gerbeer? Oh, intriguing. All right, Holly, thank you so much. We'll see you in just a little bit. That's it for the end. Uh, from the National Portrait Gallery to the murals you find in Columbia Heights and U Street, there is art all over the district. Still ahead this morning, Holly is showing us how to unlock the artist that lives inside of all of us. Stay with us. It's 721 now. All right, Julie, thank you so very much. This morning, we are getting in touch with our artistic side. Yep, Holly is in Northwest this morning, uh, giving us a little peek. Holly, good morning. You cannot disturb someone during the creative process. <laughs> are you afraid you're not creative? You really are. Maybe you're just not learning from the right person. Well, we have signed up for some art classes this morning. Marian Pollock is the pro and our teacher, and she's putting us through the artistic paces. We're going to tell you how you can, too, live next on Fox by Morning News. Stay with us. Hey, guys, your drafts can't look better than mine. <laughs> County Crows for you this morning. It's 7.52 on this Tuesday morning. Folks trying to get in across the 14th Street Bridge this morning. D.C. region home to many great people, many talented people, many talented artists who use all kinds of unique mediums. But not all artists are gifted enough to just pick up a brush and go. For some, it takes classes and lots of practice. Holly's in Northwest this morning to learn more about how we can all unleash our inner artist. Holly, good morning. The key is small, manageable bits. I always say that about my life. If something's overwhelming, break it down to small, manageable bits, and you can tackle it. And that's what I'm learning about drawing as well, and a little watercolor, and a little uh, coloring in, as we are taking some art classes in the studio of Marianne Pollock, who has been putting us through the artistic paces already this morning. How's everyone feeling? Creative? Yes? Good. We're in the zone. And Marianne, let's kind of talk about what is a good age to start learning how to do art? Well, I think we start making art from the very beginning, you know? Uh, I had kids as young as two. Um, I taught in Montessori school, so mm -hmm. any group. And, I mean, even one-year-olds. At Sitar Center, they have one-year-olds making. Wow, you know? wow. I mean, that's what we do. That those We start with scribbles, and then we go into a We organize our scribbles. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our first project of the day was to do a geometric giraffe, when, which at first I'm like, I'm going to draw a gir giraffe? That's pretty tough. But this is how we started. Kind of quickly show everybody what we've been doing. Okay. Um, I'm doing this in magic marker. Ideally, it's done with a uh, pencil, a 2B pencil, to be or not to be. And um, we just basically start with an oval for the body a nice long thin triangle for the neck making sure that it's really long enough to establish that it's a giraffe and not a horse and then there's this nice sloping down of the uh, vertebrae and then a rep repetition of the triangle and so the key is, because I know we can't get it all done in, in the short amount of time that we have, is that every part of the body, she had us decide what geometric shape that was. So then we put all the geometric shapes together, and then if you kind of flip the page there, then you kind of start to soften the lines, right? Exactly. And give it a little more animal feel. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not my best giraffe draw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're, we're kind of stylizing this. Um, but it, we want to get the muscle, at mm -hmm. least some sense of the, of, of the How strong, action, and, yeah. the strong strength of the animal, exactly. So after we drew it, then now we kind of colored it in with pencil. And what were, what were our few tips for coloring with pencil? 
Um, well, we won a lot of contrast. So um, each uh, child sort of chose their own palette. Um, basically, we wanted to get those um, shapes, those uh, kind of rock shapes for the um, for the spots, spots on the giraffe um, to really pop out from the body. So it's clearly established that it's a giraffe. And then we now we're doing a little bit of watercolor. Tell me about this. Well, we w first we wetted the paper. We want to make sure that the paper's nice and wet so we have a wet on wet technique, uh -huh. which kind of makes a, a very uh, nice blending of the colors and um, sort of looks more mm -hmm. realistic. I want to check in with my little artists here and see, wh see what they think. Now, all of these have been students. They Tell me your name, sweetie. Yoli. Yoli. And how many art classes have you taken? I don't know, but kind of the same as her. Kind of the same as your friend across the way there? What, five, ten, six, seven? 15, 30, wow, these guys are good. So what was your, what do you think about your draft here? What were you kind of thinking? Uh, I don't know. You don't know, you were just kind of painting? Yeah. No inspiration, just kind of going with whatever you feel this morning? Now I do have one little artist over here, this is Millie. Millie, you chose uh, blue and orange because? Um, my favorite colors are blue and orange and I sort of just wanted to do something with fantasy. And that's the beauty of being an artist. You can do anything you want. MyFoxDC.com is our website. We have a link to Marianne Pollock's website. You can see her artwork there. You can also find out more specifics about the different classes that she offers and how much they cost and how you can sign up. We're moving on to still life in our next hour. Take a look at this. We already have an artist at work. We'll see um, if we can tackle that between 8 and 9. Back to you guys. No doubt you can, Holly. Thanks. Very cool. So last night they must see an advertisement. We're going to show you next. Then art classes don't have to end in elementary school. Oh no! Holly is enrolling in a variety of courses today, and she is bringing you along with her. Stay with us. Fox 5 Morning News. We'll be right back. Don't miss your two shows in the district. Holly, good morning. Good morning. The subtleties of still life in watercolor. We have enrolled in an art class this morning. We're learning from one of the best, one of the area's renowned artists, Marianne Pollock. That's the studio where we're hanging out in, and you can too. We're going to tell you all about finding your creative side live next on Fox the Morning News. Stay with us. All right, I got my cuddle of color, Marianne. Where do I go from here? Now, do I Call on the her tickets. Art classes don't have to end when you get out of elementary school. This morning, Holly is enrolling in classes perfectly uh, fitted for kids and adults. Holly, good morning. <laughs> they don't have to end when you get out of elementary school, but it still might look like you're in elementary school <laughs> when you're done. No, this is my first creative work here. This was my geometric giraffe. Uh, with a little bit of watercolors, the background that I did in the first hour, and I did it under the tutelage of Marianne Pollock, who is an artist in our area. She does lectures, she of course does her own art, she teaches, and she teaches all level. And um, Marianne, we've moved on now to the still life watercolor portion. First and foremost, how do you work your classes? Um, I mean, do people sign up for one? Do they sign up for five? How does it, is there like a thematic class? Yeah, usually there's a, a, a series of classes mm -hmm. and I sort of make it move around my exhibition schedule so right. it can happen make at any time. it work for you. I understand Hi, that. Room. <laughs> but anyway, um, and so yeah, people usually sign up for five to seven. It's very flexible. People can choose their own classes. Um, Saturday afternoons, Saturday mornings are intergenerational, so that's, oh, that's really cool. fun. I think when people want to be artists, one of the things that make them really feel like an artist is when they do still life, because it just sounds so artistic, if you will. Know. <laughs> but it's funny because we've been working on the still life, and um, it's deceivingly hard. In fact, here's my new favorite friend. It's <laughs> called the eraser. <laughs> that I've been using a lot. Initially, I tried to tackle the apple and the plate, and then Marianne said, let's just forget the plate and uh, do the apple. And I want to bring in Soupy as well, because Soupy, you're someone, you've been taking classes from Marianne? Yep, I have. And so, uh, how have you seen yourself really progress? Um, to some degree, it's like riding a bike. I hadn't painted in a really long time, and coming back and painting with Marianne taught me, re-taught me a lot of the fundamentals and just kind of made it fun to make art again. Fun to make art. That's the key right there. Okay, so now, what are you, tell me kind of what's going through your mind there as you're working on your apple. Uh, really what I'm trying to do right here is 
really saturate the image with a lot of color. I have a tendency to paint kind of light, so I mm -hmm. want to give it a lot of color and also give it some dimensionality. I don't want it to look like it's flat on the page. I want it to really look like an apple. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm having that dimensional problem myself. Okay, so now kind of tell me, because one of the key things that you said, which really s struck me, Marianne, was that you were like, when we're doing still life, we need to paint or draw what we see, not what we think it looks like. Exactly. What the wonderful thing about art is it develops the right side of the brain, which is really sensory and it's not necessarily, it's associative. So what we're doing is we're directly going from our eyes into our brain and, de and developing fine motor skills, eye-hand coordination. So we're really staring at the object and within this apple are actually the lines of perspective. So the line that is straight ahead is really you facing the apple and the curvature is already delineated in these lovely lines that um, you can use the cadmium orange. So we're going really starting, this is a wet on wet technique and basically you saturate the um, image with water, mm -hmm. lots of water, so that it naturally blends and we establish the light source, which, let's see, it's changing with the camera. It's on the right-hand <laughs> side. <laughs> that was it. My picture looks terrible because of the light on the camera. I just discovered that that was the problem. <laughs> I can find an excuse in anything. Okay. Well, maybe we have um, encouraged you to come find the fun in doing art again. MyFoxDC.com is our website. We have a link to Marianne Pollock's website. You can find out more specifically about her classes and also about her art as well. In fact, coming up in our next hour, we're going to see some of her art. We're going to take another lesson, and we're going to see if she really is related to that other famous artist with the last name Pollock. Hmm, back to you. Hmm, I think we know who that is. Holly, thank you very much. Holly's art, impressive. It is. It is impressive. Yeah. Now, okay. what we have to show you here. Do some real trouble. Plus, Holly is getting artistic this morning. Holly, good morning. What are you working on? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm working on several things. Always have multiple projects. There's the master at work down there. That's Marianne Pollock. She is an artist in the D.C. area and a wonderful teacher that you can sign up classes from. In fact, look, this is one of my projects. Okay, no, this is one of her latest projects. It's called The Afterlife, and she recently sold this to the uh, Cutter Foundation. Is now doing work in Doha as a result. She is known around the world and yet will teach you and me. We'll tell you how live a little later. It's beautiful. Thanks, Holly. Welcome back. It's 945. Holly Morris is connecting with her inner Picasso this morning. She is with artist Marianne Pollock, uh, learning a variety of styles to express herself artistically. Holly, will we find out right now artistic lineage? Yes, exactly. No, I'm going to wait to make you wait a few more minutes before I tell you about her artistic lineage. Um, we were just talking about my artistic side and my state of mind. This is Mary Ann Pollock. We were talking about my stream of consciousness. And I really now I'm in such this zen mode, I feel like I just got a massage, right? <laughs> so now I'm really ready to be creative. Woo! -hoo -hoo! We've been working on that all morning. Okay, so let's tell everybody what our next our next thing is, and this might be my favorite way to paint ever. <laughs> what are we doing here, Anne? And me too. This is called a contour line drawing. Basically, we have Sumi ink, and we're, in this case, we're studying uh, lilies. We're not looking at the page. We're just looking at the object. It could be a figure. It could be anything you want. It could be something as mundane as a cell phone. Okay, anyway, so I want people to understand what you just said. <laughs> you never look at what you're drawing. Exactly. It's called blind contour drawing. You only look at the object and you just kind of see the object and then feel the artwork. Exactly. You're feeling the edges and so that it, your eye and your hand are moving at the same very slow meditative rate and you're really the object is telling you how to draw it so you flow with nature so metaphorically in a way it teaches us that we don't have to put so much effort into life that there it is in front of us all the answers maybe just needing to have a little more ink on the page right. <laughs> sometimes the answer is to put a little more ink but other than that you just let it flow and really you are serious in the fact that you're like this is how you really get into the creative side of your brain Generally, I, I do at least 50 Sumi ink drawings before I start painting, and I journal and do all kinds of things, sing and dance.
but just to get out of the left side of the brain to the right side of the brain where it's associative and, and not so thinking, but more feeling. So this is my fourth. I have three there on the table. I started with marker, then I moved on to ink, and then there's marker, there's the Sumi ink which is basically charcoal and, and water, a little gum Arabic. Now, people, I mean, these kind of things, if you're really good, can be very expensive. Like to the tune of, what, $65,000? Did you tell me that story? Oh, well, well yeah, if you're uh, Ellsworth well, well, Kelly. If you're Ellsworth Kelly. Oh, so I'm not Ellsworth Kelly, more. but I might need to do a few more. But, but, but there you Matisse, go. But early Matisse, you know. Yeah, early Matisse, right. Early mm -hmm. Matisse, I think that works. <laughs> um, so anyway, I want to talk, because you, you actually use these as inspiration. Then you go from there, and you put the color, and you transform into some of the paintings we see hanging on the wall here. Talk to me a, a little bit about these. Well, I just try to distill the shapes down. And uh, as I said, I just sort of get into this you know, space, this zone. And then um, it just takes me. The painting paints itself, sort of. And um, so there's a kind of controlled chaos. This <laughs> one's especially. It's kind of like my life, controlled <laughs> chaos. And actually, a lot of the inspiration behind this painting came from fireworks in Mount Pleasant on 4th of July. Anyway, I guess I just realized that. But it's also a very architectonic, and in that there's like the structure holding it together. So without that very simple circular shapes, the whole thing would just be this kind of crazy party. Anyway. Okay, so the obvious question in looking at your artwork and being with you this morning and hearing you talk and the fact that your last name happens to be Pollock, um, would you happen to be related to the famous Jackson Pollock abstract artist? Well, uh, yeah, apparently. And uh, I grew up more on the Irish side of my family, so mm -hmm. I really didn't know. I said, yeah, I brought the World Book Encyclopedia in and said I, did, I was. But Apparently, there's just not time to go down to the Library of Congress to figure that one out. But the Scottish side of the family says yes. So, and I did find some drawings that um, were done out west, and Jackson Pollock was adopted by a family, James Pollock, and I found some drawings from my Uncle James. So we're checking that out now. But That's pretty apparently exciting. My, my relatives say yes. So it's pretty fun. But I lived at the um, estate of an ab a real abstract expressionist in New York, uh, Richard Preset Dart. He's having a show at the Phillips Collection next month. So. Oh, well, you know what? Maybe I can then have a show afterwards. Because yeah. look, I you have quite a few here. Look at my morning. I want to make sure you see all that I've done. There's my <laughs> giraffe and my apple. If I'd have had more time, it might look like that. But anyway, you can sign up for her classes. You can check out her uh, her artwork on another website that we have a link to on ours, myfoxdc.com. I don't want you guys to argue over which of my piece of art you want for your house, okay? We'll work it out when I get back to the studio. Back to you. Dibs on the giraffe, I'm just saying. Holly, it's very good. I'm, that's fantastic. Are you surprised? There's, she, there's nothing that she can't do. That's great. I got the giraffe. All right, thank you very much. Uh, you've heard about these.